Do not become depressed to the degree that you begin to question Allah. People say, why is Allah testing me? Why? He doesn't like me. Well, if that's the case, he didn't like anyone on earth because everyone is tested. Even Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who is the most loved by Allah, the best of creation, the highest of all, top creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without a doubt, he's been through more tests than you and I. It's a sign of the love of Allah. So one might ask, how is it the sign of the love of Allah? Let me tell you. So a, a young man is born into a wealthy home. He's lucky. He's powerful. He has authority. He's got everything from a young age at school. He's the big shot. He graduates. He comes up university. He passed. He got his degree. He became whatever, whatever, a big title before his name. Everything top shot. Everything is proper, proper. But guess what? He's never tasted hardship. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, My worshipper, I love you too much. I need you to get close to me before you die. You need to come closer to me. You need to cut your bad ways, your habits. You need to cut your previous life. So what I will do, I will inflict you with something really, really big. So you go through a car crash. The car was damaged beyond repair and you were saved. Your family members were saved. That's test number one. Nothing happened to your body. But something happened to your wealth. It's called the loss in wealth. And you've been saved in terms of bodily harm. So you woke up and you said, Alhamdulillah, oh Allah, I thank you. You have one of two ways or a few ways of looking at it. People say, oh, that's good. These airbags saved me. This car of mine, Rolls Royce, it was big enough. It smashed, but it was okay. Everything is fine. It's good. I'm happy. And you go back to your bad ways. Allah says, no, no, no. We love you enough to give you something else because you still haven't come to us. The second way of doing things is to say, Alhamdulillah, Oh Allah, you rush to the masjid, you read two rakaat of salah and you thank Allah to say, Oh Allah, I thank you for having saved me and my family. Ya Allah, my bad ways, my habits, I quit them. I will not miss a salah from today. This is why when you have a test in your life, ask yourselves, my brothers and sisters, has your life changed positively? If yes, it was not a punishment. It was just a tapping from the love of Allah. But if you become despondent, depressed, you begin to question Allah, you hate it. You, you, you become more arrogant. Nothing's happened in terms of positive change in your life. It might just be a punishment. Wait for another one. Astaghfirullah. May Allah not do that to us. You haven't yet changed. Wait for another tapping. It will come. So the next time you lose your son. Astaghfirullah. Now what happens? You're stressed. Your mind is not in its place. You start reading salah. You start asking questions. You start wondering what happened. Allah says, look, first time you didn't turn to us. We're turning you now. That was a gift of Allah. Your son might have got Jannah. Your daughter might have got Jannah. Your wife, husband might have got Jannah. Your parent might have got Jannah. You preparing for it now as a result. This is why sometimes the death of a close family member is our ticket to paradise. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. It's just a wake up. It's a reality check. Allah is telling you, hang on. You are in the fast lane regarding the dunya. We want you to get onto the fast lane regarding the akhirah, the hereafter. So this is how we're going to do it. It's Allah's plan. I'm only giving you examples. Allah is the one who chooses exactly what's going to happen in your life.